Okay, so continuing the build with my T300 engine um, out of my 95 Tiger. Again, like I said before, they are pretty much the same right across the range, the T300 range uh, from the Triumphs triples from the mid 90s. Um, we did obviously remove the um, Sprag the, the other day and obviously uh, I've refitted it now. So while we have the cover off um, on the top access one, um, the i'll show you uh, now we're going to split it uh, so i can split the bottom casing um in case you haven't got the access panel and you need to do the sprag uh, i'm going to show you how, how to remove the base side of it uh, to actually get it out from underneath because uh, i am tearing this engine right down um just to do some uh, bits and bobs to it now if you have got the upper access panel and you wanted to remove the bottom casing for whatever reason anyway, uh, there are a few bolts in here that you will need to remove. Obviously, there's the two bolts here. Uh, there's a larger Torx head bolt there. Uh, there's a few down the side and uh, two at the back. Um, with those removed um, you sh and everything else that you've already removed, like the side casing cover for the timing, uh, not for the timing gear, sorry, um, for the balance shaft gear, uh, and pretty much everything else uh, everything else now you can do from underneath uh, so what i'll do is i'll get around to flipping that over i'll get some bolts undone and i'll show you in a minute okay so now we've got it flipped over you can see the bottom end of the engine as you can see it's just upside down on the bench uh, what we're going to start by doing is removing basically the base oil pan to start with as you can see you've got the drain plug for the oil filter housing um the crossover pipe uh, which is fitted to the uh the non, uh, should we say, oil cooler engines. Um, some people have a tendency to have a look for this. It's quite a hard part to find. So when you do, if you do, uh, gonna, if you are going to remove this, be quite gentle with it. Uh, just keep an eye on this as well because it can be uh, get a little bit rusty because it's just exposed underneath the engine quite a bit, and they are quite hard to find. Um, you've just got a ring of bolts around the outside. Uh, so we'll start by whipping them off. And once I've got them off, I will come back and show you what we've got inside there. As you can see now, I've removed the base oil pan from the bottom of the engine. Um, one of the reasons I was doing this as well, other than the rest of the work I was doing, is every time I change the oil on this, it was always dirty very, very quickly afterwards. And I've had another T300 that wasn't like that. As you can see, there's a fair bit of a yucky sludge in the bottom of that. So I, I'm not convinced the, the history on this engine was particularly good. <clears throat> I've only had it 18 months. It's ran fine ever since I've had it, um, bar a few minor issues. Um, but yeah, as you can see, there's quite a bit of sludge build up in the bottom of the uh, um, bottom of the engine there. The filter, the strainer there in the bottom of the pan is relatively clean, but we'll pull all that out. Obviously, before I put it all back together, I'll get all that washed out and get that all nice and clean again. Uh, one thing I will say is obviously when you remove this pan, um, you will have to remove the oil filter uh, housing. Uh, because that obviously screws into the base of the next piece so that does actually hold it in place so you will have to remove that to take the pan out so uh, the next stage of the um, strip down uh, is to remove the base of the engine uh, so we're going to remove the whole base cover the base um, bottom half of the engine basically um, as you can see crankshaft is all in there uh, all the oil way ports and everything um, just be careful obviously just have a quick check of all these seals uh, where they feed into the, the oil galleries in the sump obviously there keep make sure you keep this one in place as well when you put it all back together uh, as you can see all the selectors and everything like that so what i'll do now is i'll remove all the bolts uh, you've got obviously the ones on the outside uh, there are a few on the inside that need to be taken out a uh, few here um obviously the main cap bolts here as well uh, those need to come out and essentially the whole thing will lift up um, uh, out the way uh, but obviously i'll show you that as uh, as i get through it thank you okay so all the bolts are out of the base now um i've just put the camera up on one side i can't really do this one-handed unfortunately there are a few things to know obviously when you do lift this off um around uh, certain areas uh, certainly around the main output shaft for the uh, obviously for the final drive for the sprocket uh, there are some seals there you need to be aware of obviously the little seal for the push rod for the clutch uh, just take note of any bearings that are on that, um, uh, that are on when you split the casing uh, like I said this will just completely lift off now uh, all in one section so I'm just going to quickly show you um, I have tapped it to make it a little bit looser but it will just 
the whole thing will just come off completely in one go. I'll just put that down for a second. Uh, just flip the camera around. Uh, as you can see now, uh, obviously the, um, the whole base is off, uh, all off to one side. So that does all come off with the oil pump drive in there as well. Mm all in one piece the few things to like i said to keep an eye on uh one of them is the 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 um the, the sort of snap clip that they're like they're like a shim to hold this bearing in place uh and also these bearings here um are uh pegged so in the in the top side of the case and if you want there's a small hole in there so if this does jump out uh these are these are pegged in here so they can't rotate um uh, also with this one as well so what the next thing i'm going to do now uh obviously we are still talking about the um the removal for the sprag uh for the engine that hasn't got the top cover uh, which is just covered over um you pretty we're pretty much getting there now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this gear set um whether you want to do it, it's entirely up to you. Uh, how I do it, I'll put a couple of cable ties around this and then I'll just lift the whole thing, thing out together so that there's no confusion. You don't get anything dropping out of the way or anything like that. Uh, one thing I will mention is the selector forks are obviously off the drum. They are down in here. Those two selector forks uh, will sit in here. So if you can try and keep this as it is, not move anything on that. So when you put it back together, it will just drop on uh, nice and easily. Uh, so what I'll do now is I'll uh, I'll get this all together, I'll remove the gear set and then I'll move to the next stage. Okay, so now we have the gear set removed. As you'll see, as I was just saying a minute ago, there are pegs to hold these bearings into place. Uh, this one's still in here. Um, but they're pegged onto this bearing here and this one here on the gear set. Uh, again, like I say, I don't know if you can quite see it there, but that steel ring there must sit in that groove. Obviously, with the actual uh, the dust seal in it itself, uh, you can see the dust seal there. The dust seal, I don't know if you can, sorry, make it out, but the dust seal has got a little bit of a groove in it as well, so that needs to sit in so it can't actually pop out. Uh, same with the other side of the gear set. Uh, the, this is actually only on, on the, the back side of the gear set. Uh, it's actually only a, a half moon, so it's only, let me just see if I can take that off. There we go. It's only a half moon, so it's not a full ring on that side. Uh, so don't be confused or think you've lost one. Uh, it is only uh, there's only one half that actually sits in there. Uh, it just holds the t holds it from shifting around anywhere. Um, back to obviously where the sprag is. We can now see the underside of the sprag clutch for the starter. Now um, with the top plate which I showed in the previous video, uh, you can lift that straight out through the top. It's a little bit more difficult taking it out through the bottom um, because it is a bit awkward now. When, you, when you're at this point, ideally you will have the, I've actually put this back on, uh, you'll have that bolt out uh, to have that casing for the alternator, uh, the drive for the alternator out. In behind that, not that easy to see, you can see the Allen key there. The two Allen keys there that actually hold uh, a small bearing in, what you can do is actually take those out uh, and, and push that bearing out to one side. Uh, it will give you a little bit more access because it is quite tight to get this out of here, but it will come out through that gap. Um, if not, you can uh, you can always just um, take, again, take this Allen key out uh, and just pull that out to drop that gear out of there. Uh, and then obviously you can just lift the whole thing out, put it back in. Um, unfortunately, this is why there's a lot of work involved uh, in doing the one with no top cover. A lot of people obviously get put off by it and it and you can see now the labor that's involved in it and the work that's involved in it and why uh, garages charge so much obviously because they're now going to put all new gaskets on to rebuild it the new sprag itself is a couple of hundred quid as well um so at this point i'm going to finish the video for the sprag um i don't really need to tell you anymore obviously you can take that out now and, and replace put your new one in or repair it whichever way you're going to do it Obviously, I'm going to continue with what I need to do. Uh, there's a fair few bits, obviously, I need to do. Now I can get to the crankshaft. Um, I don't really need to pull the crankshaft out, uh, but I'm because of what I'm doing, I'm going to, because I'm going to remove uh, all the rods. I'm going to check all the bearings. The pistons are coming out, so I'm going to pull this all off, flick it back over again, pull the head off, and then obviously do the pistons. I'll, I'll probably do a, a, a bit of a video for that as well, um, so you can see what's going on. Uh, I don't know, I hope this has helped somebody else. Uh, 
maybe to be able to do it themselves or at least explain why uh, it is so costly uh, to actually do this job and can unfortunately outweigh the cost of the vehicle sometimes. Um, hopefully this has helped, thanks very much.